A question we get often in DUI cases is how do they test the blood? How do they test my blood? Well, they really don't. What they're actually testing is air. It's called headspace above your blood. So if you've been stopped for DUI or somebody you know or love has been, they're going to take blood out of that person's body and put it into two vacutainers. These are vials. I've shown them in other videos, and you can take a look at those if you want to see exactly what they look like. They don't actually test the blood from that container. They take the blood out and they put it into one of these. It's called a headspace vial. The headspace vial is a different type of a vial. It goes into a different machine. And what they do is they take a blood, your actual blood sample, so they pipette it out of the original container. They put it into a new container called the headspace vial. Then they will take a cap and they will crimp this cap right onto the vial. So you have your, your liquid blood down here, you will have blank space here, and you'll put a cap on top of that. That cap needs to be crimped, it needs to be tight, it needs to be self-contained, and it needs to be sealed properly so that nothing is coming in or out of this vial. At the very top of the vial, you have what's called a septum, it's a rubber septum. And what they'll do is they will pipette a bunch of samples into a bunch of these different headspace vials, and they will heat these vials up, so that the alcohol that's within the blood will actually essentially kind of vaporize. It will actually leave the blood and it will equalize with the air that's above the blood. And so if you can know what the ratio is between the alcohol that's in the air and the alcohol that's in the blood and you know what the temperature is and you know what pressures are and you know a lot of different variables, you can surmise, you can calculate and reverse engineer and calculate the alcohol that was in the blood based on what the ratio is at the top here in the in the headspace here. So what they'll then do is these vials will go into a big machine. It's called a sampler, an auto sampler, and the machine will take a syringe and it will puncture the septum at the top of the headspace vial. It will then pull the air out and run it through a gas chromatography machine. That is what's actually tested. The air above the blood sample, it's called headspace gas, is tested. So people will say, how are they testing my blood? Are they putting a dipstick in? Are they running the blood through a machine? For alcohol cases, they are not doing that. It's not testing the blood. They're actually testing the headspace above the blood. So that can introduce some variables. It can introduce some room for error and it can introduce a lot of legal defenses. Some of the things that we are looking for as defense lawyers are surrounding this procedure. How are they crimping it? What are the temperatures that they're using? What are the dissolved solids that are in the blood? And a lot of different things, and I listed some of these here so you can see them in the video, but you wanna make sure that the crimp, that the seal on the headspace cap is, is solid, that there's not different pressures, there's not air coming in, coming out of it, because when the, when the septum is punctured by the syringe, that's expecting a certain pressure, it's expecting something to be coming out of there without gases leaking out from the sides of the headspace cap. So that's important, you wanna make sure that the seal is good. Sometimes what we'll see is variability in the temperature. So as I said, this vial needs to be heated, it needs to be shaken, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly shaken in, a, in, a, in, in the auto sampler and things. And so what you wanna make sure is that the temperature is consistent because if the temperature is too high, the pressure that the machine is expecting is gonna to be too high within this container. Similarly, you wanna look for problems with the syringe. So if you see, if you see uh, error logs in the machine or in the sampler where the syringe is puncturing or not puncturing or it's bending or it's being replaced a lot of times, that may show you that there's some problems in the sampler. And I can show you, uh, I have it uh, prepared for a different video. We're gonna be showing you exactly what that looks like. But if you're seeing some error logs, if you're seeing a lot of replacement of the syringe, that may be an indicator that there are some deeper problems that are worth investigating. And the other thing you wanna look for are what's called uh, her hermetocrit. It's basically dissolved solids. It's, it's uh, something that basically was, is showing you that there's some dissolved solids or maybe hard clumps of blood or something else that's actually in the liquid blood that can impact the ratio between the, what's called the partition ratio between the actual liquid blood and the amount of alcohol in the blood and the headspace. So there's a lot of different things that you're looking for, but this is how it works, practically speaking. They're not actually testing the blood. It's different from a drug case where they are actually running some liquids through the, a machine, but they're, they're just basically pumping air through a machine and they can calculate 
or claim to calculate the amount of alcohol that's in the blood based upon the ratio between the amount of alcohol in the blood and the air. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, if it doesn't, that, that, that's okay. It's not something that we expect you to know or anything, but it is something that helps illustrate that this process can be a little bit more involved than some people think. They're not just taking a swimming pool test tube uh, dunk strip and putting it in your blood and saying, oh, that's what it looks like. It's actually a lot more involved process. So when people come to us and they're concerned that the blood result is what the blood result is, it's a number. I guess there's, that means there's nothing that you can do to defend my case. That's not actually true. There's a lot of room for error. And this is just one very small part of the entire testing sequence. So there's a lot of ways that we can make very good arguments and find where these crime labs are a little bit less than accurate and actually not as foolproof as they may claim to be. So if you have any questions about your specific case or if you're watching this for somebody that you love and you wanna meet with our office, have them give us our call. We offer free case evaluations and we're happy to speak with them. Thanks for watching.